Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome as we gather for worship and praise today. Uh, it's been a while since we've done divine service setting one for communion. So that's what our, whether it's on the screen or in your bulletin, we'll be doing the full divine service setting one. To begin our worship, we'll rise and we'll greet one another. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. 
Praise Him according to His excellent grace. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with lute and harp. Praise Him with tambourine and dance. Praise Him with strings and pipe. Praise Him with sounding cymbals. Praise Him with loud clashing cymbals. Jerusalem to Gaza. 
This is a desert place, and he rose and went. And there was a, an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasures. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened on his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and began with this scripture. He told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll say together our gradual. Christ is risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Our epistle reading is from 1 John 4. <clears throat> Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world. Therefore, they speak from the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll rise as we sing the Alleluia and verse. Thank <laughs> you.
Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated and we invite children to come forward. where Pastor read this morning. And now, I like to read. Do you guys like to read? And your reading gets better, maybe you like it more, right? Do you find the better you get something, the more you like it? Should I ask the others how many like to read here and you watch to see how many? You look behind you. I'm going to say, who likes to read? I think, like, almost everybody, right? So, <clears throat> do you like it when someone reads to you? Hmm? Yeah, it's kind of a cool share time, isn't it? You know, <clears throat> um, even, even so, even now, and, and adults, grown-ups, if you're busy, you can go into an app and you can get books. Used to be books on tape, books on CD. Um, now there's even like apps for the Bible, if you want it. If you wanted to be able to listen, somebody will read you the Bible. And uh, you could do that uh, when you're, say, driving, when you get older, or when you're doing something else. You can have this in the background of different books you might want to hear. Did you know, too, that if you know somebody with dyslexia, have you heard of that word, dyslexia? It's kind of where you get your words backwards or mixed up. And a person with dyslexia might spend so much effort in trying to make sure that they have all the words in the correct order in the sentence they're reading, that they don't understand, they don't comprehend what they just read. But if they hand the book to someone else and, and that person reads that line back to them, then they can understand it because they don't have to struggle with trying to keep the words in the right order. And they hear it and they got it. But there are times where we read stuff and we don't have any trouble with reading the words or whatever, but we'll read books and sometimes if they're hard to understand, right? What they're trying to tell us, we don't maybe get. And then what do you do? What do you do if you're reading something and you don't understand what it's telling you? What should you do? Oh, search it out, okay. Do you have people that you can ask? Like maybe parents, maybe teachers, librarian? Yeah, you Google it, yeah. Sometimes you can find another source to help you understand. Well, what book did I talk about this morning when I told you what the title helped me understand? Do you remember what the name of the book was? Acts, the book of Acts. And in that, there was an Ethiopian. He was from Africa, and he was a very smart gentleman. He worked for the queen, and he would have to understand a lot of things, right? He would have to be able to do his job well and to keep expanding his knowledge. So he was reading, 
he was reading from his Bible, which would have been like a scroll in those days. And he couldn't understand what he was reading. He didn't know what that portion of the scroll, who it was written about. He didn't have, perhaps, somebody who knew about the scripture. But you see, there was another man who was heard him speaking out loud when he was reading it out loud. Out loud is a good way to read sometimes, too, if you're not getting something or understanding. Um, Philip. Philip was the apostle of Jesus. And Philip had recognized what the eunuch was reading. And so he came over and asked him if he understood what he was reading. He offered him help. Isn't it great when people like our Sunday school teachers or our regular school teachers or our parents or friends offer help to help understand something? So he said, you're reading about Jesus. And he wanted to learn more about it. So Philip told him all about Jesus. All about starting with the scripture verse that, that this eunuch was reading and explaining how that was Jesus told him all about Jesus' life and what he had did for him, too. And how that, um, he, Philip would have told him especially that Jesus had died on the cross for him also. And that by believing in Jesus, that his sins would be forgiven also. So, that means that, that Philip, someone helped the eunuch understand. I read the Bible, and I don't may, I maybe think I understand or I don't understand. And so I can come like to Bible class here, or I can ask pastor, right, to help me, or I have a concordance in my Bible to help me. But back in those days, they needed teachers. They needed help that way. He was so happy to know about Jesus that he said, hey, I want to be baptized. There's some water. What's stopping me from getting baptized? And that's what happened. He was baptized. But do you know what happened after that that we didn't read about today, maybe? That man went on and told others. You see, when you understand and when you come and you learn things in your Sunday school class, right, or from your parents teaching you at home from the Bible, then you are equipped to be able to help others. If you know others are struggling to understand about Jesus, you have the knowledge to help them, too. And isn't that great if you're a helper? Um, our moms and dads, our Sunday school teachers, our pastors, and other people help us to understand the Bible. Now, we can be thankful for them because then we understand that we have the gift of salvation through Jesus dying for us, too. Let's hold our hands and bow our heads. Lord, Father, we thank you for your Bible, for your love letter to us. Help us to study. Help us to reach out to understand what the Bible is, is saying. And Lord, help us to share it with others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
command to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you get teary-eyed and, and stomach-tensed, uh, heart-hurting when you see one of those commercials with starving children from a third world country or a war-torn area? You see the distended stomachs, the, the walking skeletons, the crying babies, and doesn't your heart just get torn out and it breaks at the unfairness? I mean, who's felt like that at times? Or what about, and I have to admit, this one gets me those abused dog and cat commercials, dogs, morning cats, but the, the dog and cat commercials with animals that are neglected and abused and, and forgotten and abandoned, walking skeletons in some cases, matted up and disease-filled and eyes full of stuff rather than light and life and joy. You see the animals just shaking from the abuse that they have endured, scared of any human contact, even the people who are showing the kindest and gentlest of movements. These, these heartbreaking scenarios can, can, tug, can tug in our heartstrings, and it can create great sympathy and sadness, and it may even cause tears. Let me add a, a third heartbreaking scenario. You see a former confirmant that hasn't gathered with us since their confirmation day. People who grew up in the church, who in time have drifted away from gathering with the family of God. Or when people are having babies, which is such a blessing and a joy and a delight, but they haven't given any thought to bring the child entrusted to their care to come to this place or any place of God to receive the needed and the, the vital blessings that God says is bestowed in baptism. Or when people can't remember the last time that they came to the Lord's table for Holy Communion. When they've forgotten the promised blessings that Jesus says comes in their eating and their drinking. When people don't recall the last Bible study they attended, they stopped hungering to hear and read and study and learn and grow from God's Word. Maybe they don't even remember where their Bible is at this point. But whenever people don't know that we print our services in the bulletin and put it up on the screens to make it easier to follow. Or that we sing the creed once a month, or that we sing this is the feast at every communion service, or even that the current pastor's name is Pastor John. How tear-shedding sad this is. Is it as sad as the starving children? Is it as heart-wrenching as the abuse and suffering dog and cat commercials? Truth is, is that it should be, if not more so. Because not only are people starving spiritually, they are abused and tormented by this sin-filled and broken world and all the struggles that it throws at them. And the implication impacts go far beyond this life and moment. It goes on into eternity. I mean, if we're honest, it's tempting and easier to shed a tear for the children or the dogs and the cats than for the straying and wandering Christian. In sin, and with a, even a hard heart, we can figure that they've made their choice. They decided the path that they're going to walk on. They don't seem to mind. They don't seem to miss it. So let it go or let them go. We can even, in our own sin and thought and word and deed, express the worst of that. But you know, the truth is, is that these wandering and weak Christians are just like the starving children. They are just like the abused and neglected animals. They didn't ask for it or seek it. 
The voices of a sin-filled and broken world were simply crying out at a low time, a vulnerable time, an influential time, and they started to like what they heard. And they became drawn in. They thought that it was more appealing in the moment, maybe just what they needed at just the right now at this time. And once they were sucked in and their world became adapted to a, to a different way of living, one without God, and now what happens is starving. Even if they don't realize it, abuse is happening, but they don't feel it. Neglect of the vitals of life and the love of, that is for them, that's what's being missed out on. And the threat of eternity alone without God's care, or without his mercy and grace and death, it really is all too real. And you know, our hearts, they should break. Because truth be told, there but by the grace of God go you and I. I mean, if it weren't for the love of God, if it weren't for the Holy Spirit's working and strengthening in, the, in our most difficult times, you and I could easily find ourselves in their wandering, in their suffering, in their abuse, in their circumstances with the threat of death being all too real. But you see, you and I, we have been blessed through in, in the fact that, that the Lord has worked overtime in our lives to, to keep us connected to Him. As we hear compared today as a vine to its branches. Jesus tells us of the struggle and the blessings in this life. Jesus put it like this. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. You know, the sad reality is that there are people who, for whatever reason, they aren't sitting in church on Sunday mornings like they used to, and as we are. People who have forgotten about Jesus and all that he holds out for us. People who have forgotten about the blessed faith that we have that clings to Jesus. They've forgotten about the terrific church family that we have here. They have become disconnected from the family of God and the life-giving food that he feeds us with. And the result is that they are like the Ethiopian eunuch that Philip encountered. This eunuch, he was living life. He was doing well even. He was a court official of Candace. So life was good. But he was struggling and confused. Reading but, but not perceiving. Reading of hope and life and eternal life but seeing only empty words. How could he do otherwise? He even said when asked, do you understand what you're reading? And he said, how can I? Unless someone guides me. And as this eunuch faced life, especially in times of pain and turmoil, he would see no relief if he kept going. Even though relief was in his hands. And you know, the same is true for so many who have become severed from the vine. Today, just like in Jesus and Philip's day, people can become disconnected, especially from the life-giving vine. And yes, while life carries on, maybe even good, maybe even great in this life, when the other shoe drops, or when life draws to a close, they can find themselves confused, lost, abused, neglected, alone, and, and even dying scared. That's why Jesus warns if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. 
it is to this world and to those who have because of life circumstances become disconnected from the vine that you and I we should weep and not only should we weep though we are called to go we are called to go and as the opportunities arise and they will the door is going to be open as the Holy Spirit allows. And we can be there to invite those who are severed to return. To reconnect to the vine for the life-giving and eternal life-giving nutrients that are needed. We have the opportunity to go and share the joy and hope that we have come to know through our connection to the vine for ourselves. We can tell our story and hope. It's the easiest to share because it's ours. We continually can pray for one another, especially those who have become severed in the moment. We can pray for those who maybe don't see the danger right now. And, and all the while, we can make sure that we ourselves don't become disconnected so that we don't face the threat of starvation and death for ourselves. You and I are called to, to go out into our world, to bear fruit in our daily lives. You know from Scripture that fruit, love and joy and, and patience and peace and kindness and gentleness and faithfulness and self-control and goodness. We were called to go and to share these things. These, is, these are our way of life. Not because we're so great and wonderful, but because the Spirit who is working in us is. And it's all thanks to the love of God that's found in Jesus. And that's why you and I, we can go and share. Share the vitalness and the vitality that we find connected to the mind. Connected to Jesus. As we are, are actively involved in word and sacrament and in worship and Bible study and in personal devotions, as we daily reflect on Jesus and what he's accomplished for us, we have the opportunity to share our joy, our hope, our confidence, to know that Jesus has given even his very life and his suffering and death on the cross at Calvary, we can share it. We can share that as we cling to his resurrection, it brings forgiveness. And it opens the kingdom of heaven to all believers. We can rejoice in and use the restored relationship with the Father that allows us to come to him in prayer and know that we are heard. We know fully and confidently that we are being responded to. We can share that we know that we are fully in his loving arms and in his loving care. Whatever comes. Because connected to the vine, Jesus, he says he provides what we need in the moments to see us through. I mean, that's why Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be given done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. You know, there's nothing more important and life-giving now and eternal life-giving than our living and active branch-connected relationship with Jesus. As we're connected with Him as our Lord and our Savior, that is exactly in all that we need. He's the one who's lived for us. He's the one who's died for us. He's the one who holds out forgiveness. And even now, at this very moment, He is lovingly interceding for us. As He awaits us to join Him in the heavenly mansion that's been prepared for us. But until that day, Jesus invites us to simply abide in him and share the hope that is yours, just like Philip did. Point people to Jesus 
and reconnect someone as the Holy Spirit works. And then sit back and watch and see how he will nourish and strengthen them as he does you. So may God give to all of us the will, the power, the opportunity, and the strength to remain connected to Jesus and to draw others to the vine. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds clinging to Christ Jesus, our true vine. Amen. At this time, we'll rise and we'll profess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, God not made, being of one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. In our prayers for today, we continue to lift up Sheila and Scott, Bob and Les and Liz and Brian. We also add to our prayers Leland, and we also add a prayer of celebration for Brandon and Emily on the birth of their son on Friday, Thatcher and Milton. We join our hearts in prayer. Father, you sent Jesus into the world that everyone might be saved. Through your Holy Spirit, bring those who don't know you or those who have wandered away from you back in repentance and faith. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, give to pastors, church workers, missionaries, and all your people the skills and patience and words and courage to share the scriptures as Philip did for the Ethiopian eunuch. We pray that many would come to the waters of baptism and know forgiveness, rescue, and that heaven is their home as a baptized and believing child of God, thanks to Jesus. To that end, Lord, we pray for the ministries of Maria and Zion, that we would be your voice in our communities. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, preserve our country with peace through those you have placed in authority. These are very tumultuous and uncertain times with many people angry, frustrated, confused, and not certain how to respond to so much. Give wisdom and courage and compassion according to your will. Protect us from all that would harm us. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, in your gracious will, bring healing, comfort, and strength to those who are sick. Give patience during this time of affliction and healing. We especially lift to you Sheila and Scott and Bob and Les and Lynn. We lift up Brian and Leland. Lord, we also lift up Brandon and Emily as they as they celebrate the birth of another child into their family. Give them all the blessings and skills that they need and watch over Thatcher. Lord, we lift up all in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Holy Spirit, we rejoice with those celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversaries this week. We thank you for the blessings of the past and entrust them to your future care. 
Lord, in your mercy, Lord, you have promised to grant us all things needful for this body and life. Help us always to pray with confidence in your mercy, knowing that your every answer is for our good now and eternally. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the offering is brought forward, we'll sing our offertory.